Hey friends, welcome to the part 23. We are looking at real certification questions. We don't waste our time on other stuff. Whatever is real, we work on the real stuff. Can same questions come in the exam? Probably yes, probably no. Focus on the concepts, boss. If you have not yet subscribed, let's wait for one more year till all your peers become certified using this channel. And once you feel left behind, then you can subscribe and become a member also. So let us jump into the questions. If this question is about cloud formation, what does it do? Infrastructure as a code, you have a piece of code, you run it, and your EC2 instances, S3 buckets, etc., would be created. So cool, right? It is like you have a Terraform, similar to Terraform. If you have Terraform on premises, and you can run it, and you can configure, create VMs, or logically virtual stuff that you can create. So you have this on your local machine. You want to deploy the stack. What is a stack? So it's a stack. You know, you have a group of resources in stack and you say that this is a stack or a nested stack that I want to put in a template and deploy it. So the stack can be one EC2 instance, one RDS database, one Redshift database and so on. So this can be one stack. You create it and stack would be created. So you want to deploy that stack to AWS what should you do first one says see one thing is sure this is possible through cli we do not need sdk for this purpose plus if you see x509 this is a public key infrastructure standard that has been followed with the certificates we do not require sdk this is an example of sdk for javascript you can deploy applications with sdk so in this case we are not going to deploy applications what sort of applications mobile web applications it can be apis or so on the question is about deployment of formation stacks. It is not about applications. So we will excuse option D. So this is wrong. Now let us look at option A. Option A is wrong because what it is telling is we will configure the CLI and we will plug the username and password. So password, we should not plug it. This is not the right way of communicating across the cloud formation stacks and local machine. If not that, then can we use SSH key? SSH key, you know why we use? Because if we have EC2 instances and we want to communicated using uh, AWS CLI. We install AWS CLI on your laptop or desktop, etc. on premises and then we use SSH keys for communicating with the EC2 instances. In this case, it is not required because we do not have a EC2 instance. We are not talking about a resource. We are talking about a cloud formation stack. So can this be an answer? Option C, what is an access key? Let's look at that. See, if you are an employee of a company and you need long-term credentials, that is done through access keys. So access keys are not temporary. STS is temporary. Access keys is for permanent long-term credentials. And what is a secret key? So if you see access key, it, it has like made up of two parts. There is one part called secret key. It's one and the same thing. And we should use this to communicate because here what we are trying to do is we need uh, a long-term credential that is gained by access key. And this is meant to be used programmatically. In this question, we are already using CLI. But even if we had API, we could have used with that. What does the best practice suggest? Best practice is boss create temporary security credentials instead of very, very long term access keys and don't create AWS root account access keys. This is the best practice. At the root level, we should not have the access keys enabled. And access keys contains two parts access key ID and the other is secret access key. And you must use both access key ID and secret access together to authenticate your requests. So, hence we saw in the documentation, we should not use username and password in that request. We should use access key and secret key in that request. So this is my final answer. Friends, I hope you already looked at part 22, which is in the members group area. That is uh, cloud kernel or cloud ninja members. Below this video, there is a join button or you can also find the join button in the description link. Please pay a small premium, become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member and gain access to so many additional questions. All of them are important which will help you clear your certifications. Now let us look at this next question, very important one. See, you have a web application, something like flipkart.com, and this is a retail merchandise application. So I didn't know in the home medicine section, such sort of things are also available. So we, the cloud environments and human beings all want high performance. It's all, the world is all getting into high performance. So you have such application and this application is put on ECS. What is ECS? So ECS is a elastic container service, which is highly secure, reliable and scalable. So you can create containers and you can containerize your applications and plug it into ECS so that it can be managed via Amazon itself. And the database that you are using is DynamoDB, which is a NoSQL database. It is a highly high, 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 high performance. 
databases so it is just like database on steroid or database on viagra that is you can treat this database as performant as that and there are large number of read requests against a small set of table data you have one small table data and thousands thousands of people are, are accessing and reading this data and you want to improve the performance of this request we want to choose two answers the first one is saying hey let's plug elastic class cache cluster so this is a microsecond latency and scale with in-memory caching see if you have databases like amazon rds which is a relational database then you can use this uh, elastic cache on top of it but if you have databases like uh, DynamoDB. DynamoDB has its inbuilt in-memory caching which is called the DAX. Let us look at DynamoDB Accelerator. So this is a fully managed highly available in-memory cache and it delivers 10 times more performance. So it is all about performance like I told and DAX does all the heavy lifting of in-memory acceleration of your DB tables. Uh, why we need cache because we are talking only about reads. We are not talking about writes. If we are talking about writes then cache will not help. If we are talking about reads then cache will help. So option B would be my first answer. Option A would be wrong because if there is already a built-in cache system in DynamoDB, why the hell we would use Elastic Cache? We would use Elastic Cache for databases like AWS, RDS, Aurora, where cache is not inbuilt uh, to a great extent in that database. Then we use Elastic Cache. Now C is wrong because it is talking about strongly consistent reads. Reads are never consistent. Writes are consistent because consistency means if I write something, if I update it to a value to X, can the other person who fires a read, can he see X or not? That is called consistency. So writes are consistent, reads are not consistent. This is wrong. Now let us look at option E, which is DynamoDB adaptive capacity. What is this used for? So if there is an uneven data access pattern, then we use adaptive capacity. That means some sector of the data is being accessed sparingly, some sector is accessed very high, and in different time periods, the access frequency keeps on increasing or decreasing in this case we have consistent we know consistently there are there is one small table and there is so heavy read request we know that so that's why this is wrong and i am only left with one option that is d what it says is we will increase the read capacity so there are read capacity units in dynamodb and each table for example has 40000 read capacity units you can increase that to 80000 or something of that sort and that can help you with this so together with DAX that is the in cache in memory caching plus increasing the read capacity can help you solve this problem you can use these two solutions together or you can use one at a time whichever helps you now let us jump into the next question here so we are using DynamoDB to store the customer orders and all the customer data should be encrypted at rest because nobody else should be able to see with their naked eyes who is the customer what is their information what is their phone number what is their salary and so on how is this possible See, one thumb rule that I should remind you of is whenever you see the word encryption in the AWS world, you should always think about this service called KMS. This is used to encrypt or digitally sign the data. You can use this for encryption and decryption of the data. You can create your KMS keys and it works with EC2, EBS, S3 and all other AWS services. A good use case is protect your data at rest, encrypt, decrypt the data, sign and digitally verify the data. So whichever whichever option is not using AWS KMS, we will stone that option to death. Now, one thing which is clearly wrong is option C. Even though they are using KMS, what they are saying is they will then create a DynamoDB table with default encryption. What's when you are using KMS, why are you using default encryption? And then it says we will include encrypt parameter with ARN of the views when DynamoDB software kit is used. There is no use of using the SDK here. So this is wrong. Why do we want to use SDK? It can be possible through KMS alone. Why do we want to use that? So C is wrong as well. Now B and D are almost similar, except that one is using customer managed key, the other is using AWS managed key. The question is clearly telling you that the company wants to generate the key. The company wants to generate the key. The company wants to generate the key. How can you ignore it? If that is the case, then customer managed key is my option and AWS managed key is not an option. So this would be my final answer. We will lock this. So friends, please subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button if you like these videos. This will help you stay tuned to the latest certification content. I hope you have referred part 22, which is in the cloud kernel or cloud ninja members area. There is a small premium. Please click the join button below this video. Become a member, gain access to so many more questions.
So friends, this is the end of this part, but I would seriously suggest if you are looking to build a career in AWS, then this is something which is very important. The certified developer associate exam, whether you are a data engineer, solution architect or whatever, but this does not matter. Whether you work for companies like Infosys, IBM, Accenture uh, or TCS or Wipro or any captive centers, this will be really important for you. You would be valued more for your skills. Your CV will carry a lot more weightage if you clear this certification. This brings us to the end of this part. We were looking at real certification questions because we do not waste time in this channel. We do not waste time and we are not here to do our PhD. We will only study that, only that quantity which will help us clear the certification. We are not looking to gain 100 out of 100 in the certification. We, that is not the goal. The goal is to pass the certification in lowest possible time, which this channel will help you to do that. Stay tuned.